Hey friends, thanks for joining us. Smash that subscribe button. Help get the word out. Help our channel grow. Benny, where can they find us on social media? You can find us at Ray Benny Sports, and we're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. We're talking. And, and YouTube. We're talking <laughs> football today. Uh, we're going to chat about some happenings from week one in the crazy NFL in the crazy week one of the NFL, whatever. Uh, but first, let's look at the power rankings. It was rankings. crazy. Uh, yeah, it was. <laughs> it? it was. Let's look at the power rankings here up north after a couple rematches of Labor Day and a couple other matches. Uh, Benny, who do you have in the basement of the CFL power rankings? Well, I had to put the Elks, the Edmonton Elks, back in the basement after that thrashing. If they would have played a game like last week that they did against Calgary, then, hey, they probably would have stayed where they were. But that was, that's... That's too bad of a beating to stay up any higher than number nine. Yeah, yeah. I have Hamilton at number nine. Uh, is Dane, Dane Evans playing? I don't think so. I got Hamilton at eight. So doesn't even matter. Doesn't yeah. even matter if he's playing at this point. No, uh, he's he's a shell of him for, his former self. So yeah, you know, we'll see what happens. It's probably going to be Jamie Newman against the Bombers next week. So gosh, I think Cal- I think <laughs> just uh, Hamilton is just that bad. And Calgary is just that good. I'll give Edmonton a little bit of a break. They'll never win at home in the foreseeable future. They probably won't win at home. Do they have the Red Blacks at home this year? Remaining? They might. No, they, they already played the Red Blacks, didn't they? They lost. Who do they have at home? I can't well, remember. Let's check and see. Check it out in the CFL schedule while I keep yapping about uh, the they, they have 14, 14 consecutive home losses. So. Who do they have next in the oh. Uh, let's see here. I don't think it's going to change much, uh, that record. I but thought they had the Red Blacks or something. They, they play Saskatchewan, but is yeah. that... Who else do they have? Uh, so, yeah, Saskatchewan, Montreal, Bombers, Argos, and Lions. At home? Uh, no, sorry, Alouettes, Argos, and Lions at home. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe They're not one of those. But actually, I'm more disappointed in <laughs> the crowd. The I'm more disappointed in the crowd than the product. I'm expecting Edmonton to lose, but it really sucks in the rematch when there's, like you look on TV and there's no one there like, it's hard though right uh, that's a lot I of get it. there's growing pains but uh, it looks so pathetic especially after seeing such a good game in winnipeg with thirty three thousand. uh but it looks really bad they announced like twenty nine thousand, but that's not true that's you, not true. you can you can flip that around and have winnipeg playing as bad as edmonton and we're gonna have struggle with crowds too here man that's a lot of losses at home They've it given doesn't up make a lot it any better points. no it sucks it, it, it sucks make it they, gotta, better. they gotta get it back in, in yeah. gear and Hopefully, once they do, the fans will start coming back. Exactly. And unfortunately, there is still a small minority of the fans that aren't going to games due to the name change. Like, that too. <laughs> get over it for F's sake. Get the F over it. The name is changed. It's not going to go back. Just drag your knuckles out of the 60s and cheer the team on and show up. Goodness yeah. gracious. Who do you have at number seven? For sure. I totally agree with that. Uh, I had to drop Ottawa back down. I guess I got a little bit too excited from them from last week, but uh, they reverted back to their old self. Uh, so Ottawa is at number seven for me. Yeah, Ottawa the same way. You know, their defense kept them in it, but Arbuckle didn't play horrible, but he played Arbuckle-like. He's yeah, just you... that caliber of quarter. He's like Drew Willie tier. Yeah. And no, 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 you know, no, no shot at Drew Willie, but he just couldn't get the job done and he was steady. Yeah, I mean, he struggled, Arbuckle, early. He got a lot of yards late, so it made it look his numbers a little bit better. And again, an, another team that's 1-20 in 20 in their last 21 games at home. That's crazy. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> like, wow. Like, I don't – how can you be between Edmonton – how are two oh teams in this goodness. league, Edmonton and Wado, are so bad at home? I just took a sip of my drink and it made it taste bad <laughs> after you said that. That was horrible. Uh, who do you have at six? I got Montreal. Uh you know they beat BC without a, uh, without a doubt, mm. but I have them at six because I can see I got, them above them being better. I got Saskatchewan at six, Montreal at five. So, ooh, okay, but, yeah, I got Saskatchewan at five. So there you go, flip those around. Um, yeah, I mean to me, Saskatchewan. You, I, I know they whatever you want to say about the food poisoning stuff going on there. If it ravaged your team so bad, that's why they got their butts kicked. But oh, they sure, got their butts kicked. Effect. Yeah. You know, they, they got their butts kicked. And, and, you know, as much as people want to say Fajardo looked good, he was 15 to 18, but uh, it was only for 124 yards. Like, that's he disgusting. Didn't look that good. No. no. So again, he still has no O line. No, and he was running for his life. And then worse O line. Exactly. With the injuries, or the not the injuries, but with the stomach pains, um, yeah. you know, it made it a lot worse for him. I, I get that. But their D, which is, was had most of their guys, maybe they're still feeling effects, but they got beat up pretty bad. 
Yeah, like, even if they were healthy, they probably would have lost by two scores, two touchdowns, I'd say. Yeah. But the fact that uh, that's just the descriptions of the locker room before that people in the <laughs> people in the sink, people in the toilet just squirting out of both directions, the leaky riders, it's just, you know, I feel bad for them. But they got whooped that bad. And the people who had to drive all the way here to watch it. Uh, safe travels on the way home, though. I'm sure y'all are home by now, but... Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they look worse than they are. And uh, Montreal's just Montreal. Yeah, Montreal's D is is a big factor. I mean, it only yes. 250, 251 yards of offense against there. So, you know, two takeaways, five sacks. So that's the biggest thing for them. Harris wasn't great um, in that game at all. So, but, you know, the, the D is getting it done and, and they took care of um, uh, Pipkin pretty good. So I'm assuming like we kind of have the same order on the rest of the way, rest of the way, way down. The question is, does the addition of Vernon Adams make them better than Toronto, who looked decent? What, what what do you have them ranked as? I have BC at number four, Toronto at number three. So um, until I see Vernon Adams, like he played a little bit and didn't get much. I know he's new to the team, new, learning the playbook and all that stuff. So I'll give him some time. But until I can see him in that offense and see how he responds, yeah. uh, I'm still going to pick Toronto as being the better team. Yeah, I think... BC will be good under Adams. I think he has a very similar skill set to Rourke and the ability to... He's confident using his legs, which will open up a lot of passes later on or just keep drives going. But I, I think it's a little early for that. The comfort level isn't there yet, despite the fact he has awesome receivers. So I do have BC at four, Toronto at three. Again, uh, McLeod Bethel Thompson. I'm not kidding. A lot of yards, but not a lot of scores. He, he is what he is kind of thing, right? Like Yeah. He's going to throw up those yards, and maybe sometimes it'll be all in the second half. Um, but he did get 365. So, yeah, you know, that that Curly Gittins Jr., cool. he's actually looked pretty sweet for Toronto, and that's a great find there. Eight catches, 161 TD. So, From Ottawa. Yeah, so that, that's an awesome Ottawa. one. Yeah. As, as many warts as Toronto has, and still even in this game, they kind of let Ottawa come back a little bit. Yeah. It's hard to put them lower. You know, because there's a lot of teams in this league that oh. are struggling to even win games. At least Toronto's putting some wins together. For sure. I think that they are indicative of who they're coaching. And every team is that way. But I think they are a direct reflection of their yeah. coaching. The uh, inconsistency. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if anybody <laughs> will get better. I don't know if they'll yeah. get more consistent. I think he's a great coordinator, but he's a good head coach. We'll see. Hey, Calgary. They're going to they're gonna have to win one game in the playoffs to make the great cup. So I know. <laughs> At home, probably. So yeah. most likely. Higher, higher, higher percentage to make it to the Grey Cup than Winnipeg at this point. Exactly, yeah. If you're a gambling person. <laughs> Calgary putting 56 points against the Elks. Uh, wow. Yeah. Jake Mayer looked, looked good. good. Could even carry looked good. Yeah. Sean Lemon, man. That guy has looked good, and he probably does not. We've talked about Legend. this before. Legend. He doesn't get enough credit in this league because you do hear a lot about Willie Jefferson, uh, Jeff Code, and all that stuff, but you don't hear a lot about Sean Lemon. But He's got 10 QB sacks this year, right? Four forced fumbles and 23 tackles. So I think he has the same uh, or more than Willie and and Jeff Coat combined. So pretty good season, man. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, of course, that that quarterback's really comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, Calgary, like, they must be comfortable with him. But at the same time, they must be wondering, geez, where could we be at if he was a starter in week one? Well, right now. They might be dang good. Well, four of their wins, okay, Riff. So four of their eight wins are against Edmonton. You know, they still haven't beat a team. I mean, they beat Toronto, I guess, but they still, you know, lost three times to the Bombers to BC. They got a home home with BC coming up. So Vernon Adams probably got to get in there. Unless BC is happy with slinging him down and doing the crossover kind of thing. But if he got that kind of QB play by Meyer when Winnipeg visited Calgary, that might have been a Calgary win. We were golfing that day. It could have been, yeah, for sure. Well, no, we were the golf in the Montreal game. Oh, yeah, the Montreal game. That's right. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the one they won. The one yes, they won. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, number one, I'm Winnipeg, of course, putting 54. Yep. We talked about that slightly. Uh, it's one of those games that was fun to be at. It'll be memorable for the ass kicking. But there's also a, 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 a believable asterisk on that one of the amount they beat them by. Yeah, it's for a, sure. It's Maybe. a depleted team. They had to yeah. drive people in from Saskatchewan. Yeah, maybe it doesn't turn into a blowout. I mean, we full, fully believe the Bombers win this game anyways, no matter what. Yeah. Um, but it's impressive. When you when you score on your first eight drives, 
you know, and you only really punted <laughs> once and that was your backup quarterback in. That's ridiculous. And, you know, four TDs, that Rashid Bailey TD, man. Beautiful. Like, that was Didn't just he have a game? pure effort. And, yeah, he had a game, all right. And that TD just topped it, man. That was yeah. a cherry on top of his game right there. Yeah, the you stadium know, was quiet. Them, so. They're like, yeah. what happened there? And then you got to see the rest arms go up. It's like, what? That was insane. Yeah, and on the, on the replay, all you see is that cone slightly moving and yeah. back. And that was it. Like, it was very slight. Absolutely. And you're like, whoo, he made that in there. That's crazy. Yeah. So... And that line extends out of bounds, right? Like if yeah, he's in the air, but as long as it crosses that line, it's yeah. going to touch down. And yeah, as it. long as it gets the cone, uh, the cone, like it's not outside the cone or anything like that, right? So, right. so I either got to go over or touch it somehow. So, Jeez. and and he did. So what a beautiful TD, and they're looking good. Bombs are yeah. looking good. Sorry, Hamilton, they're coming. The only the only thing, Drew Worley, Taz, Keeney, Nick Hallett, or Nick, sorry, Noah Hallett and Nick Taylor. Their injury wise, uh, Will Tarski didn't look great. Yeah. Nick Taylor left right away. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we don't hit too many more injuries as the season goes on. What's the, what's the status on O'Leary Orange? He played. He got a touchdown last game. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, he yeah. didn't get hurt last game again, did he? Uh, I don't think so. Not that I heard. Oh, okay. those, those are the main guys. Um, of course, Brandon Alexander has been practicing, but no Michael rush. Kutcher, on hopefully. Him. Yeah. When you got this kind of, as long as he can get in the last few games of the season or something like that, you know, getting yeah. ready for the playoffs right now, just make sure he's good to go. Because obviously you don't need them. I think two more wins and basically the Bombers have clinched the West. Wow. You know, so so you, I don't know what you do over those last, uh, what is it, three games? Like that, that's a lot of games or four games actually. I don't Again, know. yeah, that's a, yeah. that's where we see part of O'Shea's genius. Yeah. So you know, they, they'll take the L's if it comes down to it and they won't sacrifice players for no. a W at the end if they've already clinched. No, exactly. We know that with O'Shea. We know that with O'Shea. Yeah, we know what we're getting now. How about some NFL talk? Ooh, talk yeah. about injuries. Oh my goodness! Mm. You know, poor Dallas. You know, you know, out for multiple weeks. Dak Prescott. Uh, thoughts on Dallas? They, they, I mean, before he even went out, they looked terrible. Oh, yeah. Like they had three points. Dak's throws were off. C.D. Lamb was dropping stuff. Tony Pollard couldn't block anything and give oh. Dak some time. That Dallas O line. Bleh. You know, yeah, like they're in trouble, man. It, it was a gone show. The Dallas D was actually the only bright spot. Uh, they did a pretty good number on Brady and stopped him for held him for field goals. But but that Dallas points offense is pretty good. Yeah, and only one TD. So you know? what do you do now with uh, at the quarterback? You know, I've gone for multiple weeks. Do you wait and see? Uh, are, are you a believer like this fool, Skip Bayless? Listen to what this guy said, man. Listen to what this guy said. <laughs> you can make a case. Quote. You can make a case that Cooper Rush is almost as good as Dak. <laughs> and sometimes I think he could be a little more consistent than Dak, unquote. Well, he didn't look good yesterday. So that's, yeah, that's Skip Bayless, man. He's got to say that kind of stuff to get a rise out of people. <laughs> what a fool. <laughs> what a fool. Dallas is in trouble. Though. Do you make a move? Yeah, for who? Jimmy G? A- <laughs> hey, hey, well, let me insert this. If you're a San Fran after watching week one, do you trade Jimmy G? You know, a week when it's, it's uh, uh, I mean, I texted you yesterday, the uh, the anger. <laughs> oh, <laughs> three times you cursed game. your team out. <laughs> Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, uh, Beetlejuice, he said his team. So, I, I mean, it, it, once you step back, I got to give, I mean, it was a terrible game weather-wise. You know, yeah. the monsoon late in that game. I don't blame Lance for that because they were winning that game in the D, which is supposed to be the strong point, started making mistakes. Yeah, Lance didn't get any points later on. But that D is really cost him quite a bit with late penalties. O line, Trent yeah. Williams, Mike McGlinchey, their best player is supposed to be on that O line. We're getting penalties too, so uh, I would, I would still be okay with going with Lance here. And I, but I do kind of hold off on Garoppolo because like we still don't know what we got in Lance. But if they end up offering you a first, oh, they won't do know. that. They no, won't do that. Let's get it, back to Dallas after pick, that but... ridiculous proposal. That there's no way I any said team. If. I didn't say a proposal, but a team. A team there's a no team. team is going to offer a first for Jimmy G. Dude, I mean, someone offered a first for Sam Bradford when they thought they were close to winning a Super Bowl. If the team is close, they, if they feel like you get the quarterback to win, they're not going to blow a season like that. They'll give up stuff to give it, get it. So I don't think anyone's giving up a first. I didn't say team. anyone is going to. I'm saying if someone offers. <laughs> oh, for know, sure you're going to take that, it. That makes for the sure Niners think. So it. you give the reins to Lance and see where it goes. So. Uh, Dallas also only scored a touchdown. It was a 51-yarder. So that tells you about what kind of threat they were at Fuel. all. 
Yeah, a 51 yarder. Oh, he's a touchdown. So just oh, did sure. I? <laughs> yeah. A 51 yard field goal. <laughs> so imagine that's really the closest they came to being a threat. Yeah, they were, they were, they were terrible all night. That offense was out of rhythm. I've never liked Mike McCarthy, anyways. Dallas made a terrible hire there. Yeah, yeah. So, but good for we, Dallas. I don't think we could tell yet. How about kicking around the rest of the week? Talking about <laughs> kicking. Ugh, yikes. Uh, that was which, something, Which man. game do you want to start at? I uh, will start about at the yours. Chicago game. Chicago, the guy missed well. two extra points. Still one by nine or whatever it was. But he still missed two extra points. And he got the penalty for patting the, uh, trying to dry the uh, turf. A 15 yard, all right? <laughs> like in a monsoon. Yeah, that's going to make a difference, ref. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Trey. Uh, yeah, what about the Cincy Pitt game? That was crazy kicking at the end. No one well, wanted it. That was nuts. I mean, the, blo- the blocked extra point, uh, you know, yep. then Cincy missed two in overtime, right? Poor long and Pittsburgh, snapper. Pittsburgh missed one. Or did Pittsburgh get one right before the end of that game, or was it always in overtime? Now they got. I mean, they tried for one in overtime, and the, the ball that Boswell kicked went in three different directions yeah, in the it air. It was crazy, yeah. And then dunked off the crossbar, or the upright. <laughs> uh, poor kickers, yeah, but poor, poor Cincinnati with the long snapper it shows you how yeah. important the long snapper is. Of course, in Cincinnati, you got their kicker missing the game winner, forty plus yarder, not even close. Uh, Atlanta, they had a chance. Yeah, that was a far one. Yeah, sixty-three yard chance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the Giants, uh, Tennessee had a chance Tennessee. Right against the Giants. Yeah, no, what well, the case? Casey was using their safety as a kicker. Yeah, and he actually uh, he hit a, a convert or two. I mean, yeah. Maybe just one, but and, and then he was doing kickoffs. Kick he, he was kicking them through the end zone. So yeah, he's but good. then Bunker Bunker came back and started kicking. He kicked a fifty-five yarder or whatever. <laughs> it was not <nuts. laughs> man. And we harp on Mark Leggio here. I don't. Not anymore. <laughs> I never did. Wow. Well, you know it's true. Uh, laughable kicking. Let's talk about the laughable AFC <laughs> South. <laughs> oh, man what a division yeah yeah no doubt they over accomplishers they tied wow. and jaguars lost against carson wentz and of course you mentioned tennessee had tennessee. a chance <laughs> number one the, seed last year lost to the giants sorry the funny thing laughing. is houston was beating indy pretty good for most of that game and then yeah. indy fought back late to tie it and then <sighs> again they missed a, they missed a field goal in overtime too that's right <laughs> and then Lovey Smith punted at, at midfield. I don't blame him at midfield yeah. with about 20 seconds left there or whatever it was. So whatever, man, it was a good, that's, that's a good feed for Houston. So you, you take that tie if you can get it. Yeah. That's your so, half game. That's yeah, a half game. Exactly. Better than a loss. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It just, and they like to lose to a team like the giants. Like, Oh my goodness. And a two pointer. Good for Brian Dable going for that yeah. two pointer at the end there. Out of way, out of way, trying to get some uh, winning mentality in the giants there. Yeah, those teams, I mean, even the Jags are up on Washington and blew it too. So that it's going to be an interesting division. Up, needs a reset. The whole division needs to take mushrooms like Someone's your boy Aaron Rodgers, eh? Hey? Aaron Rodgers. Your boy Speaking Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers. <laughs> mushrooms. Oh, my goodness. What a guy. This guy is complaining he's, on the bench, crying. He's got to give one. his uh, wide receivers some mushrooms maybe. Yeah, yo, boy. That guy Maybe they won't one. drop the ball. <laughs> that first, uh, first second rounder. Second rounder? Second uh, Yeah, second rounder. Their North first Kredane. wide receiver drafted, yeah. Well, he's still heartbroken over Notre Dame losing. Oh, that weekend. was terrible. That's a touchdown all day long. <laughs> it was a great throw. I mean, it was in his lap. Yeah. You know, and they he just it. flat out dropped it. So, And they missed one on uh, like fourth and goal. Yeah. A.J. Dillon, the big beast, couldn't put it in. Yeah, they, they were down there a couple times and they couldn't get it in. I they mean, had chances. He only had 195 yards for Rodgers and 22 completions. And you're thinking if he has 22 completions, he's got, what, 400 yards? Like, that, yeah. he didn't even break 200 there. But he was getting beat up, four sacks, two. Absolutely. And... Well, they, they, they didn't have both of their starting tackles. No, and they haven't had the one the left tackle for a long time anyway, so maybe he'll be back. But, yeah, he took some heck of a hits yesterday. Yeah. Devontae Adams might have helped. Yeah, I think they're going to miss Devontae more than Devontae is going to miss Rodgers, obviously, after week one. We saw, we'll see how it goes, but Rodgers needs that guy. He's got to get some report with some of his other receivers. So, yeah, like, like I think it's still the Vikings division to win, but I think the Packers will be a threat week to week. I think they'll still be a playoff team. Like, uh, once they get it together, they lost big time last year in week one. To the yeah, they did, and everyone wrote them off. So, relax, he says. R E L A. X. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. What we're doing <laughs> I'm more worried. You know, I'm more worried about them Steelers, man. This might be the first sub 500 season 
if uh, TJ Watt's gone for long term, and he's gone for a while, but man, he was looking good on that defense, and that'll be a big well, loss. That D was feasting yesterday on Burrow, man, with yeah. the amount of sacks, the four interceptions, and I believe Burrow also fumbled. I should have um, a 42 nothing game. Yeah, it, it, that's the thing. If you had the offense of old, like say <sighs> Roethlisberger or anything, you're probably, yeah, that game's over at the second quarter, but it's a little bit more cautious with Trubisky, but as he learns, maybe it'll, it'll get better with that, and they'll trust him a little bit more. But apparently, he may not need surgery, so Watt may not be out for the whole year. Well, he's going but, for second and third opinions. Yeah, but it's still going to be what six to eight weeks ish, so it's still <sighs> going to be a while. It'll be a long um, time. And then Najee Harris, we'll see how he is. It, it might be just part of that list, Franzic, uh foot injury he has. They say it's looking like he'll be ready for the Patriots. Yeah, so he should be okay, but he's going to be playing with pain probably pretty much for most of the season. So. It's going to be a split backfield for a while. They don't want to put too much mileage on them. And either way, they don't have, they don't have the offense to... Yeah, I think Tomlin's looking at his first losing season, uh, especially with these 17 games. Matt Canada is not a good offensive coordinator. He's trash. I said that last year, and I'll say it again. He's trash. And, but they got the, the funny thing is they got the guys. I mean, they got Claypool, you got Deontay Johnson, and this George Pickens is supposed to be pretty good. Yeah. All line's okay. They Najee Harris, the far. good one. So, yeah, you got to start opening up that playbook look playbook a little bit and you know and get Absolutely. Trubisky looking downfield maybe they'll do it once he gets a little bit more comfortable but we'll see that's so Losing much time Watt, season. So, yeah oh that's huge that's huge. That, that that d is your bread and butter to keep uh, games close and to cause turnovers and give that offense extra i mean that was like you know that's what you want to see out of that d giving that offense in great spots going short fields scoring touchdowns so we'll see they were still causing some havoc even once Watt was out of the game yesterday so yeah yeah are the Dolphins that good or are the Patriots that bad? I think a combination of the two. Uh, I, I want to see more out of Miami like we talked about. they got a tough schedule with Baltimore and a few other teams. Buffalo, right? Come on up here. So we'll Bengals. see after that. But that Patriots offense, oh. it, you know, as bad as it looked in the preseason, it looked even worse yesterday and couldn't get it going. So I'm not saying Miami, Miami is bad. I'll leave him right now. I'll, I'll wait and see. But, yeah, you know, they, they got it done. Tua looked all right. Um, had some... Good throws, some bad throws, but the Waddle touchdown, man. Just get the ball in his hands and let him go. Yeah, they got to get a more dependable running game going. Yeah, I mean, Chase Man Edmund, Edmonds did not do much. Most are, I don't think, much either. So, no, they really got to, which is surprising. It's a Mike McDaniel offense. You think they get that offense going, the offensive line shifting and stuff like that? Didn't quite, or maybe it's just happening. Maybe it's a process still. The funny thing is, the guy actually went for it on fourth and seven at one point, and then Shanahan basically punts always at fourth and one. It's like, Man, can you get a little bit of that uh, killer instinct? I don't know. Sometimes is Belichick so. done? I think Belichick's done in maybe New England or something, or maybe he's just lost total interest. But why wouldn't you just walk away if you did though? Pride, you know, go out Pride. on top instead of leaving this image that you were uh, terrible at the end, kind of thing. I think the I think he's hearing the rumblings that people are, are believing the game is passing by, and he wants to prove people wrong. And I think the game is kind of passing him by. It's looking like it because his decisions have been weird. Uh, doesn't even have a named OC or DC. It has a bunch of different people running the show. It's like, I don't know what's happening there. Man. But yeah, we'll see. I mean, they made the playoffs last year, right, in New England. But this offense this year, not clicking. <sighs> brutal. brutal. <laughs> uh, I can't wait for next week's action. Join us later on. Hey, don't forget to leave a like. Leave your comments in the comment section to any of these questions. Are the Dolphins that good? Or are the Patriots that bad? <laughs> are the 49ers going to trade Jimmy G? Should Dallas Cowboys make a move for Jimmy G? Are the Steelers going to have their first sub-500 season? Lots of questions to go. So keep putting your comments in there. We want to hear your thoughts. Uh, shout out for the week and a big shout out. Uh, who's it going out to, brother? It is going out to uh, Sarah Orleski, who is uh, leaving the TSN CFL broadcast and joining the Winnipeg Jets as a full-time uh, production manager, and I guess on air as well. So yeah, on air content, media yeah. content. So shout out to her, great career there that she built at TSN and and opening doors, hopefully for other women to to join in on those ranks. Yeah, she's a legend. She's a goat. And yeah. she wasn't like any kind of flamboyant personality or anything. Try to take attention on camera. Uh, she's just like a hometowner for us, who gave us a fax. Didn't try to be a celebrity. It was like listening to an old friend chat about football, uh, and giving us the inside take. So shout out to Sarah Oleski. 
Yeah, and you and you would have known if she was a bad person because TSN wouldn't have went on and on and on about her and how a great person she is, right? They would have made it probably yeah. short and sweet. But everyone that went up to her, Bomber players, Claros giving her a game ball, you know, it's all great to see. Tribute at the stadium. Yeah. It was crazy. Well deserved though. For well sure. Well deserved. Uh Benny, got anything to say to our friends? You know what? Just uh thanks for a lot for listening. Don't forget to subscribe, follow, and uh, have a good day. And in the famous words of Para, ugh, Paul Bear Bryant, winning isn't everything, but it beats anything that comes in second. Hey, friends and neighbors, don't forget to check us out online on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at Ray Denny Sports. And don't forget to check out our YouTube channel. Leave a like, leave a comment, tell us what you think.